Hey everyone, Sir Terman here again. And today I'm bringing you some Kale Bar gameplay. And the reason that I wanted to try out this deck in the new patch is because of the buff to Cygnus. So I do think that Cygnus is actually stronger in non Nightfall decks because it can just buff up like some really big units, right? So in this deck, for example, you can buff up the Kale to get her to be an elusive and just push a ton of damage with her. So this deck is gonna be an elusive deck and it's playing pretty much the whole Kale package, including her mother, Mira. So we're gonna have some fun here with Kale, Bar, and Mihira, and we'll see how he actually goes. Remember, if you like our content, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. And I'll see you at the end of the video for some mulligan tips and an in-depth breakdown of the deck. Enjoy the game. In this match, we're going against Tristana, Timo, and Nar. Okay, uh, the Cosmic Journalists are really good, right, right, in this matchup. I think it's too early for all these cards. I think I like I like the Journaling. Okay, Mihira still... Mihira wants to be in this game, right? Mihira wants to be in this game, so that's fine. We can go we can go bird. So we can go bird cosmic jungling. Of course we get Timo. Ah, it's fine. We get to we get to heal it back up, right? So we get to heal it back up. Uh, let's just attack in the open. Opponent's probably never blocking this. So we can just attack here. If this hits the Mihira, we're gonna be in a good spot. Nope, he hits the Kale. That's probably the worst one of the three that he could have hit. Because this jungling being at 2-5 would have been actually crazy as well. So a little bit unfortunate. And obviously hitting the Mihira would have put us in a really good spot as well. So a little bit unfortunate, but what can you do? Not looking great. Not looking great. I mean, this this doesn't matter to me, my friend. We we just heal it back up. Yeah, this 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 uh this attack doesn't matter. I mean, you get to put five shrooms, so never mind. It does matter. It does matter. It does actually matter. All right. I'm gonna just pass. I'm gonna just pass. Okay. Well, the point is gonna be able to play that that uh the Alcat, right? So opponent can play the Alcat. I'm just gonna put this here. I'm just gonna put this here. Opponent could have a group shot, so I need to be careful that I don't attack with it if I don't have a way to save it. Mihira, we get to hit the Mihira. Uh, do I bait out the group shot here? If I go like this, opponent will just block over there. I guess I don't need to attack. Yeah, why, why am I attacking, right? If I, if I can have this Mihira stick, why am I attacking? If anything, I should just play the Lodestone on the Bell Breaker. Right? Like, this is, this is probably the only play I need to make for now. Just I, I like just because we have nothing better to do. Well, that sucks. Never mind. Well, yeah, I think we just lose to Tristana now. Maybe not though. It's gonna depend. If this Mihira can stick on the field, if she can stick on the field, I think we win the game. Trust me. If she can stick on the field, I think we win the game. Why don't we go? Why don't we just go like this? Okay, so this is gonna die no matter what, right? Why don't we just take that damage? What if I don't respect that Tristana? I do respect two things, though. I respect the group shot, and I respect the uh, I respect the Buster shot. So I'm gonna wait. If the opponent passes back, then they just win the game. I have to wait for them to make a misplay. You never, you can never, you can never do anything here, right? Now you cannot. All right. So Mihira sticks because the Pale Cascade keeps her alive. We can go ahead and just give her the Lodestone as well. Now she doesn't die to a group shot. I get to life steal all the way back up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what did you expect to happen, right? There's one problem though, right? <laughs> we're losing. We're losing to Tristana. So we're losing to this Tristana, and that makes me feel so sad. We can go. We can go kill. 
But Kale probably doesn't do anything for us, right? What if we just go second Mihira? What if we actually go... What if we go second Mihira? But the second Mihira is just so vulnerable to the opponent's removal. So what if we go the Divine Clerk? I think I'm going to need extra blockers. So I think even if we play the Kale here, it's still going to be... Like, we'll play the Kale. It scares me to tap out of Pel. It scares me to tap out of the Pel Cascade, though. Maybe what we can do is give this Jungling. If we give the Jungling elusive, all right, check this out. Okay, so if we give the Jungling the elusive, we can buff up the Mihira so that she has life steal this turn. So the opponent will have to have a second Nar. This Tristan is still a problem, but we can just chump block her. And this is actually a lot of light, a lot of elusive damage. So we go all the way back up to 15. And then 16 next time with the Yonling. But the Tristana is still a problem. Opponent can drag this Mihira with the Tristana. Alright, so we gotta go like this, I guess. Right? Lodestone, Lodestone. That gives me life steal. We are attacking for 13. If opponent does if opponent doesn't sacrifice their team, they use a lot of damage. I, I'm just not playing around the heavy removal at this point, right? I mean I, I'm losing to any removal that they have. We have some life steal here with the divine clerk, which could potentially skip me alive. I can buff it up with Kale too, if worse comes to worse. If if worse comes to come. Yeah, the problem is that the overwhelm still goes through, right? I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. Everything. Whoa! You're never getting a hit with that Teemo. Now you just put yourself to in a losing position next turn. Okay, I am scared, right? If, if, if this Tristana gets big enough and the opponent has like Christ fight. Yeah, this is a problem, right? I'm getting a lot of lifesteal from this Divine Clerk, though. And we also get to heal here. We take two shroom damage. Okay. Wait, why not block with the team if you're gonna replace it? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. So we lose the lifesteal here, of course. I think I don't I think I don't block the Nar because he has the overwhelm. Right? So I don't think I block the Nar. I think I block here. I block here and block here. And we still live at two. If the opponent has a prize fight, I just lose. What is going on? What is going on? So, I'm down to play Mihira again here. Because next up we can go Winged Messenger and Kale. Or we can just straight up play Orasi. I guess maybe it was better to just play Winged Messenger, right? But we can also just play the Orasi to get the uh, Mihira to where we need it to be. She'll be at three. What just happened? This mama is the beast mama. What just happened? I think it's going to be Kale, right? To get the Mihira to five. So we can get Mihira to five by going Winged Messenger, Kale, and have Pell Cascade as well as the Dark and Lodestone buff. We gotta have four elusives. Uh three elusives, sorry. Unless the opponent, opponent has removal here, right? There's no way they don't have they, at this care. They might have like a group shot. Oh, it's just a buster shot. Okay, so so they get the buster shot. Alright, so so then what's our play now? What's our play now? The swinging messenger, we have two elusives. I'm so scared of the opponent having removal for the second elusive. So let's say that I go Celestial Blessing. 
It's gonna force the opponent to have to have exactly bust the shot again, right? So this is gonna force him to have to have exactly bust the shot or have a second NAR. So second commando, bust the shot, second NAR. Do we pale now? Opponent can get Pokey Stick if I do anything else. If I do any other action, opponent can get Pokey Stick. If they have the group shot, if they have the group shot plus prize fight, then they win. Because if I let them play the prize fight now, they can just go ahead and go for a. Uh, I guess if they play that, they, we have to tell Cascade, right? So maybe it was correct to let them do it. Maybe no, 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 because we want we're gonna pelt cascade before. Yeah. So, oh, we got there. Please, 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 we get there. Please, please. I know we get there. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Oh my God. What a game. What a game. What a freaking game. Mihira is so clutch. So clutch. GGs. In this match, we're gonna against Barus and Samira. Oof. <laughs> the challenges, like the challenge. If we can stick this Mihira, right? Maybe keeping the bar, bar uh, keeping the bar was greedy, by the way. But I mean, it is a nice, it's a big blocker, so I don't hate it. But it's probably greedy to have kept this bar. If we can have this Mihira stick on the field, I think we just win, right? Well, I guess we don't win, but. Yeah, just trade with me, please. Thank you. We don't win, win, you know. Uh, so we can go bar. Have the Mihira have two H two HP. Please hit Mihira. No, it doesn't hit the Mihira, so it hits the bar instead. Sometimes you're the fish. Sometimes we don't have a play. Opponent Oppon Oppon gets two damage on us here. We don't have a turn three play. So we don't have a turn three play. This can easily die to a Furious Wielder. Okay, so we can go Youngling and at least get to heal back up a little bit. And then we can play the Bar. And then we'll have the Aspect, right? The problem is the Scout on a Samira is a little bit of a problem. There's no reason for us to attack there, because obviously the opponent has access to Momentous Choice or any other buff. Uh, which either one would be a problem. Let's go ahead and drop the Bar here. I definitely like the idea of the Mihira. Right? Hmm. This is interesting. Do we ever block it twice with Bar? What if we actually do? What if we actually kill this guy? <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's an interesting that's an interesting thought, right? But I mean, I have this because my concern with this guy, I mean, Mihira is still gonna die anyways to Furious Wilder. If they attack, I will I will block both. So I will block both, and the reason that I'm gonna block both both is because the chances of Mihira dying now are pretty much zero because the opponent doesn't have access to the Furious Wilder. So we can go ahead and attack with the youngling to get our one damage. Unless they top the, like a mystic shot here from this, this Mihira will stay on the field. So unless it is a removal, like how they just had last turn. Wait. What? Am I going crazy here? I'm confused. I'm confused. They actually got the removal, by the way, right? So we got they actually got the removal, but chose not to use it. We have Falling Star into second Mihira. So they actually got the removal and chose not to use it. Yeah, I'm just gonna go here. We gotta Falling Star this guy. Or we can fall and start the cultists. I mean, either way, it doesn't matter. I think we just fall and start this uh, this bigger one. I guess we take more damage, but we're gonna have lifesteal, right? So I don't think I care. 
I think I just want to make sure that I get rid of the big one because these two are going to buff each other up. So then we just play Kale. And that's going to get both of them to have elusive. So here, there's two options. We can play Bar or we can play Kale. And I kind of like the Kale. And just give both of them the lifesteal and the elusive. There's no way. There's no way that he has another one, right? Surely. Surely they don't have... That he doesn't get another removal here that he can use. Surely. Right? That's the third ambitious cultist. Surely they don't get another removal here. They could have access to... Uh... Yeah, they technically could have... No, they don't have access to Previous Wielder here anymore, but... Let's go like this. This Kale is going to get very crazy, by the way. She's going to level up. If the opponent cannot kill Kale, she's going to level up on the next attack turn that we have. Because these girls are buffing, buffing her up. So she's going to be at 11. Uh, I think it's time for us to play this bar. There is one problem here, right? This Barris, if the opponent gets a mirror, this Barris could kill the Kale. But the opponent, even if the opponent kills the kill, we have the elusive. Like, if they had killed the first Mahira instead of the Yonling, I think they would have been in the driver's seat this game. Like, I'm actually so shocked that they decided to go after the Yonling instead of just killing the, the, the Mahira. So here they're looking for the Furious Wilder that will allow them, like I said, to kill this uh to kill this Kale. But we then have the elusives and we're chilling. We just press OK here if the opponent attacks. They have two fleeting cards. Samira is annoying as well. I'd rather I'd rather I'd rather them have the Furious Wielder than them have Samira. I think I'm better off with them having the Furious Wielder than them having Samira. Okay, second barrier. So they actually go ahead and kill the uh, kill the first Mihira. So this Kale will actually level up because she will go up to eleven. So she will go to 11 because of the because of the Mihira, and we get to see the Kale level up. We can even go ahead and put the Dark in Lowstone if we want to have Spell Shield. I don't know if it's necessary, but let's keep it as an option just in case. So here's the Kale level up. Now, I technically do need to play around the opponent having access to Unforgiving Call, right? So actually, since we want to play around the Unforgiving Call, we probably do well. Now that we have the kills judgment, I think it's actually correct to go Winged Messenger. I was gonna go Orasi to give Spell Shield to, to to buff this Elusive up and then give a Spell Shield. So I could have gotten this one to seven. Even if the opponent has some forgiving call, it will hit the Kale and the and the uh, Mihira, and it wouldn't hit the Esmos, right? But now that we ended up with a Divine Judgment, we can beat a uh, Furious Wilder. And that's fine, right? So this is just game, right? Yeah, this is just game. We just go like this. That's a big kale. <laughs> that's a big kale. So this is telling me no unforgiving call. If you're blocking like this, right? Because this is going to get frozen. This and this get frozen. Okay, and this is why the Divine Judgment was so good, right? <laughs> Even if they have the Willing Death, which is what they're showing, it can only kill the Mihira, and actually it doesn't even kill her because we just got Divine Judgment. If the opponent has both, they can't strike for both, right? The problem here is that the first strike was Barrus. So the first Barrus strikes, Gets rid of their stuff, right? Let's go ahead and get the kill double attack because we, if we leveled up kill, we might as well get it. So we leveled up kill, so let's get our double attack in minus 57. Minus 57. Woo! I think the opponent just threw, right? If they had done the single combat on the Mihira, they 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 roll, right? They high roll. They had dropped the bomb and they had single combat back to back. So, minus 50. GG's. 
in this match, we're going against Tristana, Timo, and Kale. So it's Tristana Bando Swarm, but has Kale as an alternate win condition. I don't hate this whole hand. I I like the Kale getting buffed or the Winged Messenger, right? I like either one of these getting buffed by the bird. Uh, Mihira, if we get to stick this Mihira, opponent just straight up loses. Right? I mean, how do they beat Mihira here? Please not bar, please not bar. Okay, Winged Messenger, again, it's not a bad one for us to have hit it. Uh, I'm gonna just push the two. I don't think I wanna put the low stone just yet. You best believe I don't if they develop, we just play the Winged Messenger, and that's a 3-5. That's a 3-mana three 3-5 three with Elusive. You have to open, my friend. Yeah, you have to open. Like, there's no world where, we, where you don't open there. So now we have this big elusive. There you go, mayor. This this is this is standard, right? So it's gonna be mayor. Then the opponent goes Alka. Next time they're gonna either have Tristana or have the grandfather fade. And yeah, yada 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 yada. You know how it is. Yeah, it's it's standard. It's standard stuff. Okay, so because we have the low stones, instead of playing bar, I kind of like playing the cosmic jungling and just going lodestone lodestone, right? Oh, who plays that? That's a little bit awkward now, right? I guess we should still go one lodestone then. That way we can start advancing the scale. And maybe next that we put Mihira. Yeah, so we're going to go like this, I guess. We know that this can heal back up. So even if the opponent blocks it with the Yoro Captain, I think that's fine. We just need, we just want to get the scale to a good spot. So this is going to heal itself back up. I guess the opponent could have a group shot and that could have been the punish. So that could have been the punish if the opponent went for a group shot, but doesn't look like they had it. I'm scared of putting this Mihira down if she has no buffs. I am kind of scared about that. Because again, she's still very vulnerable to like a group shot. So maybe we actually go bar. Knowing that next turn we can level up the bar with the Kale. So we can go here, here, here. And just clear their board. This could be a Solani as well, by the way. So us killing their units that get buffed means that Solani can just kill us. All right, so they get to kill the bar and the young link, but not the elusive. That's interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. Maybe we should have just gone for the Mihira, to be honest. Maybe we should have just gone for the Mihira and said, screw it. But I think if we play this scale, opponent's going to be very, very hard to actually get to where they need to be. Because this scale is going to level up really quickly. So she's gonna get to eight, nine. To dispense justice. So we can get her to nine right here. I guess not if we attack. If we don't attack with this guy, we don't get her to nine. We only get her to eight. So we'll go like here, like this for now. Let the opponent trade. They're gonna give me their their back again. This is the problem, right? If the opponent has Solani here. It's gonna be very awkward. We can sacrifice the Bird Ringer with the Kale. Second jungling is not bad. We hit the Mihira. Okay. As long as it's not like an overwhelm, I think I'm fine, right? Yeah, we go here. We still have a blocker. You're gonna give me the captain? Oh, Biggle does. Okay, I was like, I was like, you're gonna give me the captain. I, that's why I was so confused. I was like, you're gonna give me that captain? Uh, but they, they, they're not gonna give it to me because they have the... the uh, I guess I'm gonna trade, right? If the opponent's gonna do like that, I'm gonna trade anyways. And we're gonna go here and then go here. Just block as much damage as possible. We'll play the Mihira. And Mihira should let me just get there, right? And, and, and we, we even have... Like, we just play Mihira and we can even do the Dark in Lodestone next turn. Oh, I mean, not the Lodestone, the Horasi. To give it looser. Now, their kill levels up, so if we don't win this game, this turn, we're in trouble. Because we just lose to the double attack. So we're just losing to the double attack. So, do we actually get there? So if we go, if we go Orasi, if we go Orasi, we can buff this up. This is actually tough. Maybe it's not Orasi. Maybe it's gonna be just going as wide as possible. 
We can get this to lifesteal anyways, right? Because we can buff this twice with the with the Esmas and the uh, Darkened Lodestones. So maybe we go like this. We have triple Lodestone. We have a lot of lifesteal. The problem is that we, we don't beat the double attack, right? We don't beat the double attack no matter what we do. So no matter what we do, we can't beat the double attack. And opponent has enough blockers to, to, to keep them alive. Yeah, no matter what we do, we can't beat the double attack. That's unfortunate. I guess maybe we do. This goes up to 10. Maybe we actually do. Maybe we do beat the double attack. Because this is going to go up to 10. 13.50. Oh, no, wait. We just have lethal, guys. What am I talking about? We just have lethal. All these buffs from the lodestones are enough. Right? This is, uh, no, 6 plus 7 is 13, 14. Yeah, that's, it's, uh, well, 15. Yeah, we have lethal. We have lethal. What am I talking about? I was trying to be... So, my thought was that, okay, we're gonna have full life. So, we're gonna have full life. She can go up to 19. Yeah, we never survive. We never survive the swim back. We never survive the swim back. Unless we top the Cartagon those our Cartagon uh, Telstone. So... Good thing we were able to find the line by just going wide with the elusives and just buffing them up with all the low with all the uh, lodestone. So yeah, GG's. In this match, we're against Timo, Tristana, and Noxus. So we do have a couple lifesteal, right? And by a couple, I mean like this is a great lifesteal. Wait, this... This hand is greedy, but it's also kind of crazy. You know, I'm gonna keep this hand. I'm gonna keep this hand. Just kind of stole them out with the with the cosmic younglings. These are such a good blockers against them. Uh, I'm gonna go Esmus first because we haven't taken any life, right? So we can go Esmus first and Youngling next turn. Especially if one of these two gets buffed. That's a great draw, by the way. The hush is amazing. Of course. Out of everything that gets buffed, it had to be the bar, right? Not the not the two younglings that we're looking for, but the bar. The problem here is that the Yonling is going to lose to the group shot if the opponent actually attacks into the Yonling. Uh, we could just drop the bar next turn, to be honest. I I'm not opposed to that. So the opponent could have a group shot here or a Pi Toss, right? So the opponent could have a group shot or a Pi Toss. What if we just kill this mayor? I think that seems good to me, right? Punish this attack. I slow down the opponent. We can go second Kelsmic Yonling next turn. And just heal all the way back up. The bar can wait. I think the bar can wait. I think I like the like Darkin Lodestone and then just attacking with the Yonling. That's gonna be a three a three six. So we go here. This guy's gonna be a three six because he's gonna get a double buff. So he gets a double buff, it becomes a three sets, and how is the opponent gonna get through this guy? Especially with us having access to Hush. Uh, I don't think they do. I actually don't know that they do. We're like back to full health. We just need to deal with Tristana. Wait for her to attack and then Hush her. We can block this one, we can block that one. Next so we can bar. And once the bar levels up, it's going to get even crazier. We can make this one a three sets as well. It's a tough situation, right? The, the double cosmic yonling is so good at just stalling it because they want to just do damage. right? They want to just do damage, damage, damage. They can't really do that. Teemo doesn't work because of the Esmas. It doesn't look like they have Tristana. I feel like if you have Tristana, you probably just play her. Right? Yeah, it doesn't look like they have to stand her. Because if they have to stand her, it's already leveled up. There's no reason not to play her. Do we ever play Bard then? I'm going to pretend I didn't have to stand her. I'm just going to drop the bar down. Because I feel like if you had to stand her, you would have just done it. I have plenty of blockers here. Again, if they have the group shot, they have the group shot, right? So let's say that they have the group shot. Um. We can block here. We can block here. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter which one. We can block here. Uh, we can block here. Keep the Esmos alive. Yeah, just let's get rid of the impact units, right? I don't want it to transfer the equipment. I guess I could have blocked this Grandfather Fey. No reason for me to continue giving it that one damage. These are both gonna heal each other, right? So they, they get to heal my Nexus. So again, opponent needs to have that group shot here or the Pytos. Doesn't have either. And now we just play Kale. And we chill. And Kale is gonna level up because she's gonna go to 11 here. Yikes! Um, what 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 are you doing here, opponent? Right? Uh, Kel just goes to eleven, no? If we attack with all five, she goes to eleven. Maybe we actually don't. Maybe we just maybe we don't attack with this cosmic jungler here. I don't want to attack with this one because it's at two HP. We just go like this and we're okay. Heck, we don't need to actually do it. She still goes... No, she goes to 10 if we go like this. So, yeah, she has to go... It has to be like this for her to go to 11. So, it has to go like this for her to go to 11. And now, Kale is leveled up. And we're still going to heal 2 afterwards. Yeah, that's game, my friend. That is game. Kale levels up. That was a crazy top deck, by the way. We have Pale Cascade. We have Hush. We have Horasi if we need to. You need to block because you can't just take this damage. Yeah, you need to block, so you lose all your units. The bar is leveled up. Kel is leveled up. And we're just healing two again. You have double impact, so we go to 11. Okay, so 11. The opponent has five damage right now. So opponent has five damage. Again, we heal twice because of the double cosmic only, so we go to 11. They have five damage, means that we're going to six. I guess if they have a... If they have... What could they have? Like, what could they have here that, that would scare me? I don't know that they have anything that could scare me. We have the Hush for Tristana. We have the Hush for Tristana, or if we need to, for one of the impact guys. And then next time we have the double attack. I guess a, a second... Two more Bando Gunners, or if, if, even if the opponent gets overwhelmed here, we still even Scout doesn't work. Okay, so that's four, five, six. Right? We have, we still okay. Five, so four, five, six. If they have a second Bando Gunner, that's gonna be nine, and then they will need to have the Price Fight as well. So they will need to have a second Bando Gunners and also have Price Fight. For them to actually get there. So for them to get there, they'll need to have both. Uh, I need to play around a potential might. So if I'm going to play around a potential might, we just block the most efficient way possible that we're not losing to the might. And I think that's game, right? Yeah, I think that's just game. We heal two back. Like, man, like this Cosmic Younglings just completely completely just ruined their day right wow this car is busted <laughs> this car is actually so busted all right we gotta attack with kale first just get our first get our attack with kale no let me get the attack with kale i wanted to put kale on the stack man that would have been like a, that would have been like minus 50 or something <laughs> Uh, why stay? Why go through your attack if you're not like, gonna receive my attack? GG's. In this match, we're gonna against Caitlyn Timo. So a lot of shrooms. We do have a lot of elusives that are gonna make the Timo's life a little bit more miserable. I don't know that I like the Divine Clerk early. I like the Winged Messenger because it's such a big static unit that the opponent has to deal with it. Uh, we have the Bird. We'll take the Timo damage the first two turns because the opponent has the attack attack token of one right so opponent is able to go team on turn one and attack twice before we get the winged messenger in the field uh the targoni tells us is actually very good at pushing like a kaylin if we need to they kept two cards so i'm guessing they have the team all right that's a great draw huh i'm gonna pass just in case that the opponent wants to like what what's the reason for the opponent not to play team there if they had it 
I don't think I have an answer for that. I'm gonna pass again. I, I, if they don't want to develop, I'm okay with them not developing. Hit Mihira, thank you. So hitting hitting that Mihira is so big for us, either way. Yeah, so hitting that Mihira is so big. Especially because we'll be able to buffer up even more. So we can buff her up, buff her up even more. So we can go dark in lodestone here, and also have celestial blessing. We can play bar instead if we need to. But I like this. I like the celestial blessing for the Mihira. If you're gonna give me this, you know I will. I will. Okay, I was gonna say I will actually go ahead and kill this if you actually give me that. Um, let's go here. Mihira at 3 HP is going to be hard for them to deal with. Especially if I somehow hit another shine on her. Do we play her? Opponent only played one car, so this didn't get the discount. So Mihira is just free now, right? Because they didn't have the flow, and this just wins us the game. So the opponent just lost the game. They never play around her. Nobody ever plays around her. Like, nobody ever plays around her, and I don't understand why. I mean, I understand why, but... Why? <laughs> so we Esmos here. We can actually use Bar as well. Now we have a level of Bar. We have Pell Cascade. Bar is going to be leveled up because of the Asmus. Uh, we also have the Dark and Lawson. Like, opponent's just dead. Like, opponent's literally just dead. Hmm. We're going to buff the Asmus and then buff the Mihira, right? Because this is already a 5-7. He doesn't need to get buffed again. Yeah, so we go like this. Uh, this gives the Mihira the Elusive. The Bar levels up. An opponent has to sacrifice one of his guys. Holy fire will cleanse the evil within. Oh, he cleansed the evil within. Yeah, opponent just lost. The moment that they let me play Mihira on turn 5, we, they just lose. They can freeze Mihira, I guess, right? The empower doesn't stick. But they don't even block her. They don't even block the bar either. They could have actually blocked the Mihira. They... I guess people really don't know how to play around her. Or don't know what she does. Like, people really don't know what she does. We have lifesteal. We have really beefy units. I really don't care what you do here. Three shrooms. Sure. I guess I, I, guess I can save this, right? If the opponent has another freeze. So the opponent has another freeze, that's what we saved that for. So once again, we go here, here. Yeah, I mean, this is this is lethal like a hundred different ways, right? So <laughs> I Yeah. Mihira. That's all I can say. Mihira. Hey, welcome back everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's games. And I think the name of the game is pretty straightforward, right? This deck is all about Mihira, Mihira. I don't know. I said it like two different ways. I'm sure people are gonna be like, you have to, you, you, you say this as Mihira, not Mihira, Mihira. Anyways, this card is so good, especially because people are just not playing around her. Like, think about how many of our opponents just didn't have removal save for when she comes down on turn five, and if she sticks on the field you almost gonna win the game because this is gonna like turbo level your bar it's gonna get everything else in your hand and in your field it just has so much health and so much power it's absolutely crazy how much of a game winner this card can be if it sticks in the field so this deck is not a kill and bar deck it's a mihira deck but that is why I really like this guy in this deck. We did get to see Kale, right? We did get to see Kale shine. We got to see a couple of the Kale level ups and kind of just pushing damage there. So that's also pretty cool. The, the idea with Kale is that she also kind of turbo levels your bar, right? Uh, and then it's not that hard to level her up in this deck because your bar chimes are always buffing up your allies. So you're able to, always to get that buff attack 
with that 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 helps see your kill level up i guess let's continue going from the bottom to the top as we talk about the decks as we already started with mihira and kale sickness didn't get to shine much in today's video unfortunately i mean i don't I'm, i am only playing two and i didn't get to see him in most of my matches uh maybe should i just play three for the sake of this video so that we could actually showcase him but i do think he is actually very powerful because not only can you go ahead and buff the kill but a lot of times you can end up with a really big bar that you can just push a ton of damage with right or or any other unit that gets buffed up by the bar so it can be so good as a game ender and the fact that he had it as elusive itself also makes it a threat that the opponent has to worry about Cosmic Binding, I think, is super important. I didn't get to see it a lot in this in this game in this video either, but it's so good at stopping what the opponent wants to do, right? And stun a Tristana, for example, etc., etc., and remove some of the opponent's units, especially against the Tristana matchup. It's so good because a lot of their units do have two HP, so you can stun Tristana as well as kill like another one of their units, and that's where you play that bar cannot say anything else about him he's just buffing up your deck you need to play three of him to get those shines so yeah he's, he's really 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 good uh especially once he levels up it just makes everything super sticky and he's also a great blocker right like his stats are not anything to 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 scoff at like even if you get a single shine on him he becomes a three sits and it's very difficult for opponents to deal with that wicked messenger is probably the best elusive in this deck like this card is so crazy I can't believe that this card is literally an elusive, a three mana, three five elusive. Because a lot of times you're gonna hit a shine on this, and it just becomes so bulky that opponents cannot deal with it, and eventually you can actually finish games with it. Dark and Low Stones is so good. Even if you don't hit the Shaman on the Messenger, you can put the Dark and Low Stone on it. Or you can put the Dark and Low Stone on your Esmos and be able to double buff one of your units, etc. That's why the Low Stone is here. It just helps you level up your bar as well or even help you level up Kale. And then when you transfer to the late game, you can always just outright play Orasi. And then the Orasi will come down with Spell Shield to give one of your elusives that Spell Shield and a 7-7 seven, seven to push Lethal with. Spell Cascade is the draw engine that I use for this deck. I, I, had, I had Gaddy Touch before, but I actually cut Gaddy Touch because it's not really giving me a stat buff, right? At least Spell Cascade is buffing my units by plus one, plus one, which is advancing the bar level up and also potentially getting like Winged Messenger, the Empower to pretend to send Lethal, etc. So really nice. The draw is amazing. What else can I say? Falling Star as a two off. Just so good, especially if the opponent attacks with their Tristana, for example. You can just play this in response and just kill her. Asmus, not much that can be said. Just your Shine Generator and buffing up your cards. Cosmic Youngling is the best card in Targon. I'm telling you right now, no card is better than this card in Targon. You saw it. It kind of solo carries some games sometimes. This card is just so nuts. I'm in love. I'm in love with this card. I wish that TK Raka was still in standard because I think this card would be so amazing in TK Raka's Star Spring. It's so sad. But I cannot speak enough about this. It just helps you stabilize and buys you the time to actually be able to just win the game with your elusives. Celestial Blessing is just a nice buff. Uh, it passes your bar by four, and it's a nice way to buff your Mihira in your hand so that when she comes down, she can at least have two health, keeping her away from some removal. Target Telstones, another buff card. I really like this because sometimes you can play the Blessing of the Target to just make an ally, ally really big. You can play the Hush to stop the opponent's, you know, lethal attack. And in rare occasions, you can go to Behold the Infinite for like some way to actually finish the game. So nothing else can be said about that so nice thing with the bank with the bank clerk and then bird is our last obviously shine card and just an early blocker that we can actually use to play so that's the decision with the deck and what each one of these cards do as you saw in the video the, the game plan is pretty straightforward play your bird early play your esmos early so you're you're kind of gonna hard mulligan for bird hard mulligan for esmos so that you have those those shine generators in your hand and you start buffing the elusives in your hand whether it's your winged messenger or another elusive right like ideally you always want to have bird in turn one so that you can play bird and buff your esmos or your messenger and kind of go from there if i am going against aggro like if i'm going against such a standard deck that's when i want to look for the cosmic journey right so so in my mulligan is bird Esmos and Cosmic Youngling, but Cosmic Youngling only if you're going against like an aggressive deck where you need to be able to stabilize with the health that, uh, to, to, you know, with the health that you need, right? So, so that's kind of the play to Mulligan. You kind of start there with the early game and slowly you'll transition into your Winged Messenger bar 
and potentially kill all Mihira turns, right? Nothing that you have cost more than six. So really, by turn like four or five, you should get an idea of how your game plan is going to go. Uh, sometimes playing Kel is completely fine, better than Mihira, if you know that the opponent has a removal for her, because the Kel, if especially if you have a, a board already, the Kel will allow you to just kind of turbo level the bar, because she's buffing all your units by plus one power, and then when she attacks, she gets as much power as again, so the bar gets easily leveled up if you play the Kel uh, when you have a pre white board. Uh, but in, aside from that, though, you usually just want to transition for your Winged Messenger or other units that can push damage with Elusive. Always look for that opportunity to stick my Mihera, right? So if the opponent gives you the chance, then take it, right? If, if they give you the chance, take it, right? Because this is such a nuts card when she gets to stick on the field. She just auto-wins game. So, yeah, I think that's the game plan. Just start with Shines or the Heal. And then transition to elusives, your bar, your kale, the whatever units gets buffed up from those early shines, and then kind of just go from there. Most of the games you're gonna just finish with elusives. Very rarely you finish up with the kale double attack. That's it. I think that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch Tournament. We stream every now and then, and you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.